So in this video, we're going to talk about the concept of resonance uh, in standing waves, right? So typically the way we talk about this is in the context of we have a tube, right? And the tube can either be open at both end, at one end uh, or open at both ends. So to start with, let's say the tube is open at both ends, right? We've got a tube and we can have a wave, a sound wave that'll fill this entire tube, right? And the question is, is this wave, what is this wave going to look like precisely, right? And so this video shows us it's a good example of showing us what a standing wave is going to look like, right? We see it oscillates up and down, and we see there are parts of the wave that are secure, that don't move, and these are called nodes, and then we see that there are parts of the wave that move up and down, and those are called antinodes, right? And so when we talk about a tube, whether it's open or closed on both ends, uh, that tells us whether the end is an, a node or an antinode, right? If the tube is open on both ends, as we'll say this one is, then the ends are going to be antinodes. And if the tube is closed on one end, then, the, then one end is going to be a node. So I'm actually gonna draw both of them, both the tubes, just, uh, so I've got one. Oh, this one is thicker marker, that's fine. And we'll say one end is closed, right? So this one has a closed end, right? Okay, and then the one above is, uh, has, has, two open, has two open ends, right? So the one that's closed is going to have a node on one end. Right, and the one that's uh, the one that's open is going to have antinodes on both ends, right? And so, what does that mean for the sake of the wave? That means that we can have a number of different kinds of waves, right? So to start with, let me draw the first harmonic. Let me explain. I'll explain what I mean by that once I draw it. All right. So the first harmonic is obviously going to have an anti can have an antinode on both ends, right? So it can be it's going to look like this. Right? Okay, so this is the first harmonic. Uh, it's an antinode on both ends. Um, and so that's what we want, right? It's the smallest wave that has an antinode on both ends. Now let me draw another, another harmonic, the second harmonic, let's say, right? Okay, well, it, has to, it still has to have an antinode on both ends. Uh, let me draw it in Let's do gold, right? So it still has to have a uh, an antinode on both ends, but now, so we'll do this. It'll look like something like this. So this is the second harmonic, right? Okay, good. Now let me draw the third harmonic. Let's do it in white. And so the third harmonic is going to look like this, Right? And so on. We can keep going. Essentially, we're looking for the smallest waves that can still, that will fill the tube and uh, that will still have antinodes on both ends. Right? And it turns out that we want, let's say we want to know the wavelength of these waves. Right? We want to know the wavelength of each one of these waves. Right? So what is wavelength? So if I were to draw out, let me draw out the, the, uh, the picture. Right? Let me draw out the wave. Right? Well, so this is typically what a wave, let's use a different color. Let's use, let's use orange. I haven't used orange before. All right, this is what a wave looks like. Um, and obviously the wave can continue, but we know that a wavelength is the amount of distance through which the wave uh, you, one full wave goes and then repeats. So this is one wavelength, right? And so the question is, what is the wavelength of each harmonic, right? So the way that we, we phrase this is we talk about it in terms of L, right? We talk about it in terms of L. So this distance, this blue distance is L, right? This is the length of the tube. And so, if we want to figure out what the wavelength of each harmonic is, what we do is essentially we figure out, let me erase this so that we can see it. We use this equation. The equation is the wavelength is equal to 2L over N, right? And N tells us the first, second, third harmonics, right? So N is 1, 2, 3, Etc. Right, and so what? Let me let, let's uh, let's plug it one in to see what we mean by that. Right, so let's plug in. 
uh, let's plug in number one. Let's see what the first harmonic is going to look like, right? So 2L over, over 1 is 2L, right? That means the wavelength of the first harmonic. So the first harmonic we drew in this color, right? The wavelength of the first harmonic is equal to 2L. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Because if I were to extend out this wave, we see that we would end up with one full wavelength if we extended it to the length of 2L, right? So 2L, this distance, right? And so this is why from that we understand that it, the wavelength is 2L. What about the second harmonic, right? Second harmonic we drew, of course, in gold. Well, what is that equal to? Uh, 2L over N, N is 2, so the wavelength is equal to L to 1L, right? Uh, and so, does that make sense? Yes, it does. This is one wavelength, right? It starts at the bottom, goes through a full cycle, and it ends at the bottom. So, and then we could keep going. We could, let's do, num let's do the third one, just uh, to understand, to help us understand. Wavelength of the third harmonic. Well, 2L over 3. What is 2L over 3? That is equal to 2 thirds L. And does that make sense? Yes, it does. So if we follow the wavelength, we see that it starts here and then it ends here, right? Two thirds of the way through our uh, our tube. So two thirds L, right? Okay, good. And so these are the harmonics of an open tube. Oops. These are the harmonics of an open tube. So now let's go ahead and highlight this stuff. I want to move this stuff up corner. And now we can talk about a closed tube, right? So now a closed tube is going to be different, right? A closed tube we know is going to have a node at, at one end and an anti-node at the other. So let's do the first harmonic for the closed tube, right? So it has an anti-node at one end. So we'll, we'll start it at the bottom, right? And how is, oops, how is that going to look? What is that going to look like? Well, it's actually very simple. It's just going to look like this, right? Actually, let me let me try to exaggerate the effect a little bit. Well, let me do that one last time. It's rather hard to draw, right? And what that is looking like, the reason why it's hard to draw is that it's a very, very small uh, part of a much larger wave. And so what that would look like is it would look effectively like this, right? And we would keep going. Uh, and so, yeah, so that's the first one. But, it, but again, it only fills a part of the tube, uh, a much smaller part of the tube. Okay, so... Uh, and it starts out as an antinode and it ends as a node, right? What about uh, the second harmonic? Let's take a look at the second harmonic. We'll draw it in gold like we did last time, right? So the second harmonic is going to be different, right? Again, we need it to end up as a node and, and start out as an antinode, right? So what it would look like is it would look like, what is it going to look like? It's going to look like this. Right? Okay, so the second harmonic is going to start out as, a, uh, as an antinode again, and it's going to end up as a node like all the other ones, right? And then we have the third harmonic. The third harmonic is going to look a little different, right? The third harmonic is going to look like this, right? Let me try and fix that because I think we... I do want it to end up as a node. Okay, so that is the third harmonic. And let me extend these out just so that we understand what it what that's going to look like, right? Um, so actually, yeah, let me fix the second one. I don't really like how I drew that one. That's how it's going to look, right? And if I were to extend it out, it would look something like this, right? And then if I were to let's re now let's redraw the third harmonic, which which is fine. Let me fix that. And so on, right? And so this is what the harmonics are going to look like. And so what are the equations? What is the equation that we can use for this, right? Well, the equation for this is a little bit different. The equation for this, it turns out actually that, that we don't actually get a second harmonic for this, right? So I was talking about a second harmonic, but that doesn't actually exist for this. Right, because it turns out what the what the number is, is the wavelength is equal to 4L here over N, but N can only be 
an odd number. So one, three, or five, or et cetera, seven, nine, et cetera, right? And we can we can bear this out when we when we look at this, right? So four L over N. The first so the the pink the pink that we drew is the first harmonic, right? And uh, so that's one, right? So wavelength of one is equal to what is that? If we plug in one for n, that equal equals four L, right? And that actually makes some sense, right? We see that here this is that if I were to draw out this wavelength, it would require four of this L. Let me draw out. Let me write out L. This is L. This distance here. Right, it would require four of this for us to get a full wavelength, right? So the wavelength of one of the first harmonic is equal to 4L, right? What about the second harmonic? Well, the second harmonic, turns out there is no second harmonic. Turns out because it's fixed on one end, we can't have a, a second harmonic. And so this one is going to be our third harmonic, right? And so what is that? That is equal to four thirds, right? Four divided by three. 4 thirds L. And that actually makes some sense, right? If I were to draw it out, we would see that we get one wavelength starting, obviously starting here, and the wavelength ends roughly here. So it's a little more than 1 L, right? We don't we see that we don't have quite a full wavelength here, uh, and so there's that. And then uh, what about the fifth harmonic, right? Well, let's take a look at that. Let's take a look at that, right? The fifth harmonic, of course, we drew in white. So 5, 4 fifths L, right? So the wavelength fifth is equal to four fifths L. And that makes sense, right? So it's a little bit lower than less than L, and that does make sense to us, right? We see that one wavelength, this is one wavelength over here, right? So we see that it's a little bit um, smaller than one full harmonic, right? Or we see it's one a little bit smaller than one full uh, than the length of the thing. Okay, and so how do we model the the way that we understand these is if I were to tell you that we have an instrument, right? and it has an open tube, then you would use this equation. If I asked you what is the wavelength of the first harmonic and I gave you the length of the tube, then you would understand that you'd use this equation. But if I told you for, that it were closed on one end, then you would use this equation, the, the equation for this one, right? And so knowing these equations for the MCAT is important, and it's a good way to understand this. And there's one last point that I do want to make, um, and that's the question, let's move this way. Uh, actually, let's move up so that we can keep this wave in our... Now the question is, what exactly is a standing wave? Why, why does a standing wave look the way that it does? It turns out what a standing wave is, conceptually, is essentially it's a wave that's moving through a medium, right? So we've got a wave, it's moving, and then what happens is it hits some sort of barrier, right? Either that barrier is a closed-off barrier, like in a closed tube, or the, the, the barrier is just the, the tube ending, right? And what happens is... So we know that we understand how waves look, how waves move, right? But when it hits the barrier, then it, what happens is the wave reflects, right? And when the wave reflects, we end up, it ends up going back. And actually what happens is it reflects back, right? It reflects back like this. And so what ends up happening, it looks a little bit like DNA. That's not my intention. Um, what ends up happening is we get a standing wave where the wave uh, moves up and down like we, did, like we saw in the video, right? Up and down, up, down. And uh, really what that is, is that's the result of the wave, the forward wave reflecting off uh, and creating a, a reverse wave, a backwards wave. And uh, it's the result of both of those waves being superimposed on one another. And so what ends up happening is we end up with the effect of a standing wave. And what that is, is again, it's uh, two waves that have reflected. That's actually not a very good drawing. Uh, and it's two, the, the two waves basically being combined. And so just conceptually being aware of that I think is valuable.